Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to chapter 16 where we are on part 3 of acids and bases. Okay, today we want to talk a little bit about acids and bases as well, but related to water. And what's kind of weird is water can actually react with itself, which is unusual from, I think, any other substance. Um, so when you talk about acids and bases, you hear a lot about water a lot. Okay, so you can see from the reaction, you have these two waters over here. And what happens is the hydrogen comes off of one and goes to the other. So you end up with hydronium. It has another hydrogen. It's H3O instead of H2O. And then you're left with only hydroxide, which is an oxygen and a hydrogen missing one of the hydrogens. Now, the reality is, is this is called self-ionization. That means that the water is reacting with itself and it forms ions. Now, this is actually happening all the time. It's not something that happens a lot, though. So it's not like you're going to, you know, remark about something strange and unusual in your cup of water. Okay, it is happening in your cup of water, but not a whole lot. Now, because self-ionization of water is not enough of a complicated name, uh, it is also known as auto-ionization and autoprotolysis. Um, we're probably going to mostly talk about it as self-ionization because, it, for one thing, it's kind of in English. Um, but auto-ionization just means the same thing, self-auto. And remember, protolysis is where a uh, proton is lost, which is what it does itself. So it's auto-self-protolysis. So it's just different ways of looking at it. Now, this water right here that is losing a hydrogen is actually acting as an acid, and the other one is acting as a base because it's accepting the hydrogen, or you could say proton, because remember, protons and hydrogen ions are actually the same thing. Now, remembering what happens because the hydronium has now accepted a proton, it is able to lose a proton, and that's the definition of an acid. So this is the conjugate acid. And this right here that has lost a hydrogen now can accept a hydrogen or proton. So this is the conjugate base. It has acted as a base. Now, with water, it can either act as an acid or a base. So this is referred to as amphoteric. That means that it can act as a liquid or a base. Water is the most common substance that does this. However, there are some others. Now, we are about to embark upon math. You do not need to know all of the math, but I want you to understand where some things come from, and that can't happen without math. So for those of you who are scared and cringing, relax. You, you might need to be able to describe stuff, but you are not going to have to do this. When you do chemistry in college, if you are one of those, you can do it then. You'll have a clue already about what's going on without having to actually do it. Okay, so, dun da 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 we get experimental data, because that's how you have to figure this stuff out. Okay, so thinking back about the reaction we just talked about, what they discovered by experimental data is that in absolutely pure water, 
the concentration, that's what the brackets around it mean, the concentration of hydronium is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles. So like I said, not a lot. They also discovered that the concentration of hydroxide is the same, which makes sense because, you know, if water falls apart, one part is hydroxide and the other part is hydronium. Okay, now, like I said, you don't need to memorize these numbers, but you need to know where we're going with this. Okay, so there's this thing called an ionization constant. And what you need to see is that it is the concentration of both of these things multiplied together. Okay, now, when you multiply these things together, you get the beautiful number of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4, or sorry, 14. Now, that number right there, the 14, is what I want you to remember because it's going to explain something that you probably may not have thought about but just kind of had a passing curiosity about maybe at some point before you became old probably. Okay, so don't forget that 14. Now, in 1909, there was a chemist named Soren Sorensen. Poor guy. Okay, he discovered if you want to talk about the pH, you have to talk about the negative log of the concentration. So if you want to know the pH of hydronium, you have to calculate out the negative log times 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Um, he didn't have a calculator. Um, he had to figure it out the hard way. So he would calculate it out and you come out with a beautiful number that the pH is 7. Okay, um, that should sound kind of familiar about something about water, pH is 7, that kind of thing. Now, Soren Sorensen did not like having to calculate out the negative log of 1 times 10 to the set negative 7. And he didn't even have a calculator and you don't like doing it with a calculator. So, that 7 is a number that you need to remember. Because M Mr. Sorensen came up with something that you are familiar with because he did not like having to do all of this. And that is the pH scale. Okay, uh, this is a description that he came up with based on the math and based on the concentrations of the negative logs of those concentrations. Now, way up here, it starts with a zero. Okay, that is the most acidic measurement. It basically means that it is all that substance, okay? That it is all acid and there's nothing else, okay? There are not a whole lot of things that are that acidic. I mean, you can see even the hydrochloric acid is less acidic than that. So oftentimes we don't even really talk about a zero. We just start at the one. Now, if you follow the scale down, what you will notice is 14. Hmm, where did we see that before? That is a combination of the two numbers combined together for pure water. Hmm, and pure water had a pH of 7. Okay, so he went and he took all the nasty negative log, timed the concentration, and he came up with this beautiful scale that we look at now. And it goes from most acidic to most basic. Water is neutral because it's neither an acid or a base. 
however much of hydronium you have, you have of hydroxide. It equals itself out. Uh, pure water, remember, is not water out of the tap. It means that it's like distilled water. There is nothing in it. Okay. Um, you can see some of the different substances that you may or may not know where they fall. Um, but Doc, Mr. Sorensen here made it much easier for all of us, especially if you have pH paper and you can simply dip your little piece of paper into the sample and the paper will turn one of these beautiful colors and tell you the pH. And you don't even have to calculate the experimental concentration or take out your calculator. So remember the man who had the unfortunate name of Soren Sorensen. And be happy. Until next time.